Hi everybody, welcome to the largest photography channel here on YouTube. Uh, we've just reached 50 million subscribers and this video is sponsored by Visa, MasterCard, The World Bank, Best Western Hotels, and Toyota. So today I'm going to go over the differences between using Topaz Denoise AI and DxO Pure Raw. So what is noise? Well noise is the unwanted graininess that you get in your image when you increase your ISO. So unlike film grain, which is cool and trendy, digital noise just looks like pure garbage. So this is a photo that I took of a Grey Car Owl, um, and it's at ISO 4000 with a Canon 5D Mark IV, and it was in pretty pretty dark conditions. So if I zoom in, you know you can see that this picture is noisier than a crying baby on a plane, and we're going to use these programs to reduce the noise, and although they're nowhere near perfect, they're really quite good, and I think the best tools that we have in reducing noise in your images. So I've already brightened up this image, you can see, to plus 0.8. And this is the original exposure, right? So you can see it was really dark, and as we increase that exposure to something reasonable, it even increases the noise even more. So that's quite noisy. So the first step before we open this up, um, one thing that I like to do is go into the detail panel and you can see that the sharpening is set to 40 and there's no masking. There's a radius of one detail of 25. And this panel used to be set as the default to 25, but Adobe has now upped that to 40. But the one real trick here of what you can do is in using the masking slider, is that you can really remove a lot of the sharpening on the noise in the background. So if I click on this slider and I hold down Option, you can see that the whole image is white right now. This is showing that there's no mask being applied to the image and that those 40 points of sharpening are being applied to the whole image. And as I slide it to the right, you can see that out of focus areas start to become masked out. So anywhere that's going dark is where the sharpening is being kind of hidden from. So I have to slide this up quite a ways to mask out that background. And so now it's at 90. And if I slide this back to zero, watch the background and look at that noise become sharpened. All right, so that's just one quick step in cleaning up your background. So we'll leave it around there. I'm just gonna put this back to around 25. And from here, let's just go ahead and open that up into Photoshop. So both of these programs, when you purchase them, you have them, I think for as long as you want, but uh, sometimes with future updates, they'll charge you more if you want those updates. Okay, so let's open this up into Topaz Denoise first. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a background copy on the picture. So you can right click, um, duplicate layer, or you can just hit Command J. And this is the layer that we're going to apply Topaz Denoise to. So I'm going to go up to Filter, Topaz, Topaz Denoise. You've got a couple of modes here. I haven't updated um, this program for a while, so the new update has an additional mode. But you can play around with all of these and see what you like. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is just look at the standard denoise AI. And so if you try to really get these sliders to the perfect amount of noise reduction, the problem that occurs is that it will noise reduce most of the image, but you'll have little blotches in the background that aren't noise reduced. And what I mean by properly noise reducing the image is that you don't want to noise reduce the image so much that it looks super silky and smooth but you, you still want to have a little bit of texture showing through the background. Otherwise, the picture just looks unnatural. Um, 
and it's super easy to just completely destroy your images using this program. I see a lot of photos being posted on Facebook or wherever that are just completely silky smooth. Looks like some strange art piece. Uh, and to me at least, it just really does not look good. So what we'll do is, what, what I usually find is that just these default settings work pretty good. And what I like to do is, I like to noise reduce the image a little overboard and then go into Photoshop and we'll reduce the opacity of that layer and allow some noise to come through. So I find that these settings usually work pretty good. You can play around obviously, but let's just leave it at that. We'll click apply. And this program, same with the uh, DxO, they use a lot of RAM and they're really going to slow down your computer when you use them. So it's best to close any unnecessary programs, like close your iTunes, uh, you can close your internet browser, other programs that are going to consume RAM and just leave that RAM open to be, be used by, uh, by these programs. Otherwise they, they take quite a while. You can see it's running kind of slow on here and I have a really quite a fast computer. I, I spec'd it out pretty well. A few more seconds here. Okay. So here we are, we'll zoom in. So you can see on this background now that it's silky smooth. There's no noise. If we move around the image, it looks like it's done a pretty good job at covering everywhere you can see right here there's a little tiny spot that it kind of missed so technically I could add a little bit more but for the sake of the video we'll just leave it there and if I click on and off of this layer you can see the difference that it's made and by keeping a little bit of sharpening in there uh, the actual sharpness of the owl hasn't really changed. Obviously, maybe I didn't adjust this completely perfect, but pretty good for now. So obviously this, this image is way too silky smooth and it just looks kind of funny. So what we'll do is lower the opacity of this layer and to do that you can click here and drag the slider or you can just hover the mouse over the word opacity and drag it down and so you can see more or less noise changes as I move the slider. So we want some noise to be showing through. So that's at 70%. You know, there's still noise, but it's it's not atrocious, but it's still like looking pretty natural. And that's what we want. So that looks good to me. And then you would go ahead and do whatever workflow you need to do. Um, many people say that you want to noise reduce your images at the very end of your workflow. I tend to do it. Um, actually, no. Most people say that you want to do it at the start of your workflow, but I always tend to do it kind of towards the end just so I can do most of my, my uh, edits in Adobe Camera Raw. So now let's try this in, to in a DxO Pure Raw. So we're going to click and drag it into the program. Okay, and so this program is a little bit funny. You don't have any controls with what you're doing to your picture. So there's no sliders that you can do. There's just one real button that you can click and it noise reduces your, your image. So what I would do to do that is click process photos. But you can see here that there's DxO modules. <clears throat> so typically in this program, if you click process photos, it would also apply the DxO lens module, which is some specific calibration for each camera and lens, and it would correct any any lens profile issues that you have <clears throat> or whatnot. But uh, the problem with using that is that it adds a ton of sharpening to the to the image file, and it just looks really bad. So it really, really oversharpens the image, and I find that it only works well for the noisiest of pictures. 
So what I like to do is click none of the above, so I don't want to apply the uh, optic modules. And now we'll click process photos. And we're going to do deep prime, that's their biggest file size, DNG, which is basically a like a universal raw file, and click process. So this only takes 15 seconds or so on my computer, but if I do this on my laptop, it takes minutes. So that's kind of the, the benefit of getting a good high-speed computer with lots of RAM is that these programs, these new AI programs just work so much faster. So we're gonna bring that into Camera Raw. <clears throat> Usually it's best to, to, um, to bring your raw file into DxO completely unedited. I just brought in the edited, edited version, um, but typically I think it's better to just bring in a complete unedited raw file. The one thing that this program does a little bit is it slightly changes the color. So this, this photo now is like ever so slightly greener than the, than the other one. Now if we zoom in, you can see that there is still noise in there, but it's greatly reduced from uh, from the original, of course. So let's see how that compares to Topaz. So this is Topaz right now with my uh, reduced opacity on the slider and then this is DxO. You can see the DxO file just looks a little bit different, right? A little bit greener, maybe a little bit more contrast. So this is DxO and this is Topaz. You can see that in the noise reduction after I brought down the opacity makes them both pretty much the exact same. Um, obviously the birds in the Topaz file are sharper because I added that sharpening, um, but sharpening is obviously with DxO something that you can do afterwards and get that exactly how you want. So they both did a good job. I think personally the DxO file looks a little bit better. I'm going to lean towards using this more often than, than Topaz, I think. <clears throat> obviously with DxO you don't have any control over how much noise reduction it's going to apply to the image, um, but most of the time doing this it works pretty well. But if you really want to fine tune it, I guess Topaz is the, the better answer for that. Let's just look at the difference between the original. So that's the original raw. And this is the background on DxO. So pretty good in my opinion. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this video. Uh, if you want to follow along with my channel and be notified when I post more videos, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.